Hi, I'm Sandy Genovese, and I don't know if you're aware, but May is Teacher Appreciation Month. So I thought this would be a good time to share with you some fun but inexpensive gifts that you could make for your kids' teachers. Now this I love because I got the water bottle at the dollar store. I found a dozen pencils for a dollar. So when I take the lid off the water bottle, you can see that basically it held just under three dozen pencils. So for $4, you have this really cute but useful present. And then I started looking at what other things could hold pencils. So I have some other options on the table. I found that these plastic drink cups, they do come in multiple sizes. So be careful to be sure, take a pencil with you because the pencil is seven and a half inches tall. So you wanna make sure that you get one tall enough. This one, I have this out here so you can see. It came, I got this at, um, I think it was Walgreens drugstore and they came in different colors, but I realized in the store that I could slide this rubber piece off and discard it. And then it's, you know, the pencils are going to show through the clear. It's going to be really cool. Also in glass, there are all kinds of fun water bottles that can be repurposed later after they take the pencils out. Then I thought, okay, what would partner with that great? And I thought a notepad holder. So this is going to be a little holder and when you open it up you'll see it just holds a post-it notepad just a simple but in you know I mean we all use these and what I did if I close this up you'll see that there's a, t a point and a slit that it holds into and what I did you can see that I actually used a die this is a Sizzix die and it's designed by Brenda Walton and I think it's genius because it has all the parts you need but I'll show you how easy it is if you don't have access to the die to do it without you have the notepad holder that's just going to wrap around the notepad and you do need a tip if you're going to stick into a slit that would be on the other end and then there's a little medallion and a butterfly that if you look at the holder itself, you can see I used the medallion for the, for the top. I opted not to use the butterfly on this one, but I have used it on others and I like that equally as well. And then this, when it's accordion folded, is going to make this like rosette type affair. So if you want to do this, here I've, I've die cut multiple ones out of multiple colors, but you can see, if I move this out of the way, really all you need to do is take your notepad, place it so that you have, I'm going to put one crease to, just to start. So if you cut your paper into an eight inch strip and then the width of the notepad, this is a three inch square notepad, then all you're doing is just wrapping it around and every place that it's going to need a fold, you kind of finger crease and then take it off. Whether you're using um, the die or whether you're just using your paper that you've cut on a trimmer, an eight inch strip of paper, either way is going to work great. So you'll get the two creases that will be for the top and then you'll do the same thing. This has to fold in these two spots. So I'm going to then remove the post-it and go back and fold those two areas as well. Let me try to do this from the side so you can really see what I'm doing here. Get your one crease, get the second crease, and then depending on, I love that she's made this really kind of fun shape, but even on a paper trimmer, you could make it like just a tag, just a straight arrow kind of shape. And where that point is will dictate where you need to get in there with an X-Acto knife and make a slit so that this can slide into there. Now, when I've seen Brenda make these, you know, being that it's her, it's her die, she likes to actually put some adhesive here and attach this so that it stays attached, um, which is actually, it makes it more permanent. I kind of like the idea that they can take it out when it's done and put a different one in, but that's totally up to you whether you want to attach it or leave it. Because it fits so nice and snug, I discovered that this one is not glued, but it, it stays in there nicely. Once you've got the actual holder created, now let's look at the next part, which will be this, um, I'm calling it like a rosette. So in order to do that, looking at the die, this is the long strip. Now you're gonna need to accordion fold it and the accordion pleats are every quarter inch. This is also an eight inch strip if you're gonna just cut one on the paper trimmer. 
this has a scallop edge. It could have a pointy edge. It doesn't have to have an edge. It will still work and make a good medallion if it's a straight edge. But let me bring this one over and I'll show you what you want to do. In this case, the scallops are meant to line up. So if I take and I fold this so that this aligns with the colored piece underneath, that gives me the first fold. I am going to do, this is a mountain fold. I'm going to do a valley fold, but right now I'm going to skip to the next mountain fold. And once again, I just make sure that it lines up. There are crease lines there, but in case you don't have crease lines, I want you to see how easy this is to do. So I'm going to then line it up and go to the next mountain fold and pull it along and go to the next mountain fold. So these outside tips are the mountain folds. Then to get the valley folds, I just flip it back over and do the same thing. So now I'm doing mountain folds, but the in-between ones. So now I'm aligning this up with the white and folding and then pulling it so that I get to the next, <clears throat> excuse me, where, try to get my fingers out of the way you can see. So the scallops are aligned again and crease. So I realize I've only done a few of these but you can see how you start to get those accordion pleats that you're going to need. Now, just to save time, I went ahead and I already accordion pleated. You do need to cut two of the eight inch strips in order to make it long enough to work and they're going to overlap with this half inch area. So I'm gonna take adhesive and place it on one of the scallops and then flatten this one first scallop out and just overlap it. So it lines up with the scallop underneath. <clears throat> Make sure I don't have any adhesive that's still stuck. And I do usually give it a minute or really like a minute literally for it, that adhesive to set up, but I'm gonna go ahead. You do want to refold now that you've doubled up the thickness. Because this is accordion folded in such tight pleats, it's easiest for this medallion to be cut out of the thinner scrapbook paper. This is also Brenda Walton paper that I'm using from um, a pad from EK Success, and it's not cardstock, which makes it much easier to do this. So now I'm just gonna reinforce all of my creases. So I have it in one long crease. I now need to bring it around and attach it the same way at this end. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna put adhesive on one of the scallop ends and then <clears throat> I'll bring it around and overlap one scallop edge. This is sort of a testament for why it's a good idea to have points or scallops on the ends of the rosette, although you don't need them, but it does make it really easy to see where to line everything up because you can just line it up with the scallop underneath. Once again, you wanna reinforce those folds now that you've doubled them up on those two edges. So you end up with what <laughs> looks like kind of a funky little, almost like a bracelet. What you wanna do is recrease everything so it's the creases are a little tighter. Once you have the creases sort of recreased, then you're gonna just push them so that from the middle, if you push from the middle, and you can see I'm just doing this with my fingers, it's going to give you the medallion shape. And any place you can even out, I can see I have one that's going the wrong direction here. There we go. So you end up with this. At this point, it's handy to have something that you can set on top of this to kind of hold it steady while you grab your adhesive. I have my adhesive sort of sitting ready here, but I find it easier to work from the back first. So I'm gonna slide this off and flip it over. Here it is from the back. I find it easiest to put the adhesive on the back. Now, this is this really aggressive adhesive that comes in sheets. If you have a glue gun, I've seen Brenda just use a glue gun in the center there, but 
if a glue gun isn't handy, these sheets are great um, and work also re really well. So I'm going to use my finger to hold the medallion while I peel the backing off of this aggressive adhesive. So now I can move my fingers sort of out of the way. You're going to position this, and this is the back, so all you need to do is just make sure that you're getting everywhere. So see how you're using this to hold everything down, but notice that the medallion, it's only touching the, the tips of the pleats. To really get a good bond, it's best to flip this over and then take something like tweezers or whatever you have and push down in between those pleats. You don't have to do every pleat, but it just is giving that adhesive something to stick to. And hopefully my fingers are enough out of the way that you can really see what I'm doing here. It just helps it to really stick. But it's still, it will stick now for maybe an hour, but if you don't go ahead and put that thing on the top, the little rosette um, or the little medallion, it's still gonna wanna pop. So now you wanna take, I'll take this guy, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put this on the top, but I need the aggressive adhesive on the back of this. So from the same adhesive, the really strong adhesive sheet, I'm gonna peel off the backing. I'll use my tweezers so you can see. Place it onto the back side of the little medallion. Pull off the pink backing. So now you have the aggressive adhesive. And the reason that I start with the back first is because now I can make sure that I get this really centered. So now I'm gonna center it so that it sits over the top and then press. Now I can't really work from the back side because I have this in the way, but sometimes I will take something, believe it or not, as thin as this paper was, once it's all folded tightly like this, you can put heavy things on it. I sometimes leave it like for an hour or two to really set it up. And then you're gonna just take your notepad holder so I can see exactly how that's going to fit. And then I'll take the backing off of, the pink backing off of the back side. Just need to find a place. Might be the hardest part is getting the backing started to get the backing removed. And then go ahead and place it roughly, it's in the center. When you have it centered where you want it, then push down. And now that you have it fastened to the adhesive fastened to something on the top and the bottom. Now it's now you don't have to worry about it wanting to pop loose, provided you use a really strong aggressive adhesive. Now at this point you have a couple of choices. When you look at mine, you can see that I used these cool little stickers. Um, also, this was from Kay and Company, which I know that Brenda Walton was licensed with them, so perhaps these are even hers. I don't know. Um, and then I added a little tag that says thank you. But I thought I would share with you, if you decide you want to use the butterfly, because oftentimes I do, that looks really fun too. So what I've done, if I turn it over, you can hopefully you can see there's a little bit more of that really aggressive adhesive. And all I'm going to do is, once again, peel the pink backing off and place this into the center. And you can see finished up, especially if I get this into the slits. What a fun and a personal, uh, maybe I'll take this and put it over here so you can see once it says thank you. And of course you put your name on it, but it's inexpensive, but so personal and so cute. Now I know that May is a teacher appreciation month, but as a former teacher myself, I think it's good to shower your kids' teachers with inexpensive, but personal gifts like these all year long. Remember, I love hearing your comments. Be sure to share us with your scrapbooking and your crafting friends. And if you want to, you can even like us on Facebook. If you want to sign up, you can sign up for these free weekly videos. However, if you want access to the hundreds of past episodes, or if you want to be able to print an instruction sheet, then you might want to consider joining the Gold Club. Bye for now.